so now I can tell you finally what a martingale is. To do that I need a few definitions first. My first definition is a filtered space which is the following uh, objects. Take a sample space, take a sigma algebra on it and take a probability measure on it. So, so far everything is as usual. And what is missing from here is a system of sigma algebras and goes from 1 through infinity where each of the Fn's each of these are if each of these is a sigma algebra so these are sigma algebras okay so these are sigma algebras and they are nested in the following sense f naught is a subset of f1 actually i should probably start this from zero let's start this from zero f naught is a subset of S f1 f1 is a subset of f2 and so on and so on so i have an increasing sequence of sigma algebras and all of these is each of these guys is a subset of my original sigma algebra f so i have an increasing nested system of sigma algebras okay that's a filter space or a filtration now let's define in that scenario let me define uh, f infinity so in that setup f infinity is going to be the sigma algebra generated by each of these so take the union of the finite fn's take the sigma algebra generated by that and that's still a subset of my original sigma algebra f okay i also want to make an example i also want to make an example suppose that w 0, w1, w2, and so on and so on are random variables on a probability space, on the probability space omega fp. And then one way to generate a filtration, and that's actually quite useful and often done way of doing it, is to take fn to be the sigma algebra generated by the first n of these random variables. In other words, it, it's, co it's a collection of all events which are completely determined by the values of w0 up to wn. So that's a, a, a good way to do a, a filtration. Okay, so that was the first uh, definition. I need to make one more before I can turn to Martin Gauss. So definition, a process xn on a probability space is adapted. So I'm still back in the situation of the previous uh, definition. So I have a filter space. In that filter space, I have a process xn. Uh, what is a process xn? It's just a bunch of random variables. So it's random variables. Uh, indexed by n and goes from zero to infinity okay so that's what the process is and so the definition is a process is adapted to the filtration or the filter space uh, omega f fn p or just in short filtration fn if very simply for every n from 0 to infinity, xn is fn measurable. Okay. Now, notice that, uh, notice that an increasing system of sigma algebras means that you have finer and finer information. We have more and more subsets of omega as n goes higher and higher in these filtrations. And this means, uh, being adapted means, that um, Fn essentially contains information about the first n of the xn's. As, think about n as time, a process evolving in time, that's what xn could be. 
and then as we have more and more uh, random variables x ends as n, n grows then we have more and more possibilities for the outcomes of the x ends and what is this definition cap capturing is that the f ends are supposed to take into account all of the possibilities of the first n random variables okay that's that's essentially what the what the meaning of this is so the the, the mathematical formulation is that x n is f n measurable okay but um, Notice that it's an increasing sequence of sigma algebras, so uh, xn minus 1 is fn minus 1 measurable, but because of this implication, this inclusion, it is also fn measurable. So xn is fn measurable, but also xn minus 1 is fn measurable, and xn minus 2 is also fn measurable, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's what the filtration is, and that's what the process being adapted is. All right, and now I can define a martingale. So, a martingale is going to be a process, it's going to be a sequence of random variables indexed by n. So here's my definition. Let's do it in this nice green color. Okay, so definition. Uh, a process, again meaning nothing very fancy, just a, a collection of random variables indexed by n. m n and goes from zero to infinity often often we're just going to refer to this as m without writing out all the indexes so just the process m um, is a martingale if it satisfies three properties so again we're having a, a filtration so we have a, a probability space we have a, a sample space a sigma algebra a nested sequence of sigma algebra so filtration and the probability measure and so we're talking about the martingale if uh, m n is adapted to the filtration we assume to have if for every n the expectation of mn is finite under the mod and here is the main thing we have the martingale property so the expectation of mn conditioned on the sigma algebra just one before that so mn is adapted to fm mn is fn measurable and looking at the conditional just one step before that that is the same as f as m n minus 1 this is when i talk about a martingale okay so imagine that we have these nested sigma algebras and if you remember so we did a lot of stuff on conditional expectation this is why we did it because the conditional expectation of a random variable with respect to a sigma algebra is a random variable itself so this conditional expectation is a random variable it's fn minus 1 measurable m n minus 1 is also a random variable and by definition of being adapted it's f n minus 1 measurable so we're talking about a martingale if these two random variables are equal okay well actually we need this almost surely remember that conditional expectations are defined up to zero measure sets and we need this property almost surely not uh, not for every omega but for a probability one set of omegas okay now actually i want to make two more definitions in this single one i talk about a super martingale i talk about a super martingale instead of a martingale if this inequality uh, sorry if this equality is actually an inequality instead that's when i have a super martingale so if m n is adapted if it's finite mean for every n and the condition expectation is less than or equal to the previous uh, term to the to m n minus one that's when i'm talking about super martingale and the sub martingale let me squeeze this here a sub martingale is the same thing when the inequality is reversed so that's what a sub-martingale is. For a sub-martingale, I need to have the adaptive property, I need to have finite mean, and the conditional expectation is larger than or equal 
to the previous value of m bar minus one. Okay, that's a that's a sub Martingale. Okay, now one remark before I proceed is the following: uh, notice a simple fact. Notice a simple fact, namely, let me just put it here. Notice. Mn is a martingale. Mn is a martingale. Exactly when Mn minus M naught is a martingale. And the same happens for submartingale or supermartingale. So in fact, I always can subtract the initial value m0, and that will not change the martingale property or the submartingale or supermartingale property. Okay, just uh, just a small remark here. All right. Now, what I want to show you next is three simple examples of martingales, just to get a little bit of warm up. So, example one. Example one, if I do the sum of mean zero random variables, for simplicity, let's take them independent, but that's actually not, not really needed. So, well, let's take them independent. So suppose that x, k are random variables in a probability space. They are mean zero. So the mean exists and is zero. And let's assume independent. And then define the sum of the first n. Mn is the sum from 1 through n of the xk. It's very easy to check that due to the independence property, which uh, we covered before, it's very easy to check that this is going to be a martingale. Of course, so this is a martingale and you can also think about what happens if this is not mean zero but for example the mean is positive or the mean is negative what do we get then okay so that's that's an example here is a second example you can also do products <coughs> example two let xk again be random variables this time take them mean 1, so suppose that uh, these have mean 1, okay, and then look at mn as the product of the first n of these guys. And again I'm going to assume independence. So the xk's are independent. Okay, look at the product of the first n. This is again going to be a martingale. Homework, check it. It's quite easy to check. And the third example I want to talk about is example three. Is again quite a, a simple idea. So let xi be a random variable. Assume that it's finite mean. And let's assume we have a filtration Fn. I'm not going to write this out, but when I write Fn, we always assume it's a filtration. And define the expectation of Xi given Fn. So the conditional expectation of this fixed random variable given the nth member of the filtration. Just by applying the tower rule, this is again going to be a martingale. Again, check this. Okay, so these are three simple examples, simple but important examples of Martingales.